on now to the intermediate foraging skills. Yes. And uh, in this photo, we can see that the mentor has uh, made a hole and is scratching the foraging toy. But it's important to say that prior to doing yes. this, he had made a hole in the other side of it and actually showed, demonstrated to the birds that they had, he had found a prize high performance stick. Exactly. And, and did not share it with the birds, but it made some vo vocal excitement. <gasps> Look what I found! And with very fun facial expression. And you can see here that the birds are very focused. They're very focused. They're in, a, in an environment that is very uh, quiet. Yes, so that there's no disturbance yeah. because you want them to have full attention. And it's very, it's very fun actually to see how curious they get easily. And of course now the caretaker is bringing the foraging accessory closer to the birds, scratching and then going through it. And in the second step, you can see that the bird knows exactly what he might be finding in there because he's already seen the caretaker find food successfully. It was safe for him to eat it because the caretaker ate it or pretended to eat it if you wish. But this is the way this works. Now, of course, this bird here is not too sure what's going on. He preferred the elementary or the introductory foraging skill. Now, he's not too sure that he's going to be doing it, but within a short period of time, a few minutes actually, uh, the second bird is actually going to participate in this. This is why it's important or great to have two birds at the same time. Yes, and this is how we also choose our future parents often. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a secret that a, a responsible aquaculturists usually keep back for future generations in breeding the wittiest and the funniest and the most uh, influential character with positive traits uh, for the future parents. And so, of course, this will allow us also to determine the potential of this bird. And, and, and a bird that easily uh, forages intermediate and advanced skills is, is a perfect tool for us to keep uh, throughout our breeding season because he's going to be a perfect mentor. A better mentor than ourselves are definitely a feathered friend. Here we have an example, another example of an intermediate foraging skill. Yes. Uh, the caretaker in this uh, picture has the piñata and is holding the piñata close to the birds but is actually swinging it a little bit, a little bit. back and forth. Yes. Um, which, although the birds are on a stable surface, it's just a little bit more challenging for them. It is, and it's also going to gradually uh, allow them to become comfortable with and, and confident that they are capable of foraging on something that is not necessarily stable. Mm -hmm. uh, an additional, um, more difficult challenge for them is that the sticks are now um, embedded into the pinata and it's a little bit more difficult for them to get them out as well. So they have to pull a little harder. Whereas the previous toy that we were using was very easy. And we're basically just slipping out of the cardboard. Right. But now it's a little bit more difficult. And this is an amazingly fun activity for your children as well to do. <laughs> Stuffing up the pinatas with high performance sticks while they're watching TV at night. Because it should be a family activity as well. To make sure that we're creating these fun toys so that our birds are enriched while we're away at home or at school. So this is a really popular one. I really enjoyed this pinata because it serves many purposes at the same time and uh, definitely uh, one to recommend. Here we have an example of an advanced foraging skill. We have an acrylic foraging device. Yes. Which is designed for parrots. It's designed for parrots. It's important that you um, choose the correct one for the species. Yes, because some species can have hard beaks and can destroy them, so they have to be safe for the species that you are training. That's right. Yes. The caretaker has to demonstrate to the parrot how it works initially. Yes. And um, it's also important to note that it's when you first use it, that the bird is on a stable surface. Yes. And later on, once they have um, gotten used to it, it, accomplished it, they can move it into the cage. It's very important. This is, unfortunately, sometimes when people want or start learning about enrichment, this is often the toy that they buy first, the device. They're, they're much more expensive, of course, than shreddable devices or the pinatas, but they're also quite uh, difficult to learn how to forage with. So it's not the first one that you should be introducing to your bird because they will get discouraged and, and therefore the caretaker will also believe that it's not possible. The bird's not intelligent enough and he will never learn to forage in such a device. So definitely when the birds are young, what we recommend when the birds leave our care is that the caretaker 
spend this type of money on a, a scale because he's going to need to monitor the weight, especially when he gets a bird. And then gradually in a few months, perhaps, that he buys a more elaborate foraging device, such as this one. But it, it's really fun to see a bird actually be so accomplished because he's achieved this type of exercise. What else is good about this device is that it's washable Yes, and, you, and it's important to dry it properly. Absolutely. And uh, you never put, of course, we've already mentioned this, we've already done podcasts for foraging devices. No, no soft foods. No soft foods in these as well. And depending on the model or the design of this foraging device, then we can use one or different uh, food items. Uh, in this particular one, we cannot use anything bigger than these uh, Tropican granules. But uh, definitely we could put seeds in this one, for sure. And so here what we have is a really fun and creative way of combining several accessories that we've used throughout the primary lessons, such as the bungee rope that we have here, and we've incorporated that and made it go through our cat scratch post. And so we have an advanced foraging skill now that mimics what we would see in the wild. Exactly. And it requires a lot of dexterity on the part of the bird. Yes. And uh, it's, it's quite it's challenging. Moving. It's moving. Um, we can see that it's quite low to the table in yes. this photo. Just in case the birds uh, would unfortunately uh, not stay rested on top of it because it's swinging. Um, when we said prior that it resembles what they are foraging in in the wild, most of the branches in the wild are swinging mm -hmm. in the wind. And so this is pretty much what we're doing as a caretaker. We're kind of moving it a little bit, mm -hmm. swaying it from one side to the other. At the same time, ensuring that the birds are comfortable and are resting. We're not trying to make this uh, completely impossible for them. We want to encourage them, and so they have to be hanging on comfortably. It seems like a lot of fun as well. It has to be fun. It has to be coping skills as well. I mean, it's okay that the individual underneath now, the small mitre underneath, is, is having a little bit more of a hardship uh, because he would like to go on top, but then he's found foraging underneath the board because there's foraging throughout the whole cat scratch post. And, and that's okay too because he's not suffering from anxiety, separation anxiety because his uh, 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 clutch mate is on top. So this is okay that he is underneath and it is also okay that uh, the uh, difficulty is greater but uh, what is good with this uh, foraging is that it will allow the birds to also do a lot of exercise. exercise. So we're combining exercise with something that's swinging with a more difficult and we've used these uh, combination swing uh, foraging uh, accessories before with older juveniles, our Amazons. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, it's going to be the most uh, uh, determined and uh, uh, advanced uh, mentor in the flock that will uh, be piqued by the curiosity of actually swinging and flying onto it. Right, and he'll demonstrate it to the others. Mm, yes, so this can be hung in a playroom mm -hmm. eventually when the birds are uh, of course flighted and can actually fly onto it and then continue the foraging skills there.